Hello, I'm uh, I'm excited because I've just now, well, about six days ago, we launched the Lean Mass Hyperresponder Study. Uh, it went over really well. This was at Low Carb USA, and I'm now joined by the fine folks of GB Health Watch, who host the very popular GB Insight test, which we're going to be using for the study. Um, can Can you guys introduce yourselves real quick? My name is Christina. Hi, I'm Megan Colwick. I'm Mendel Ross. And and I have to I have to first <laughs> start off by saying, I keep uh, initially I kept saying, okay, so who's the point person? Who's the person we're going to be talking to? You know, from GB Insight, and uh, it it was interesting. You guys really do kind of share that leadership role to where I just now, anytime I'm sending out, an email, <laughs> yeah. or for a three headed group here. Exactly, you're you're <laughs> like a a three-headed committee that's really <laughs> tight. Like you really do connect a lot. So we are we're a tight-knit group. <laughs> yeah. But it's great because you're you're extremely responsive. This was one of the first things we noticed when we were uh, shopping around for a provider, which now we should get into that, like what the services are that you provide. And of course, uh, when we're doing the study, we need to confirm participants, they, they have their lean mass hyperresponders and that kind of connotes that they uh, have gone on a low carb diet and they've seen their cholesterol rise as a response to the low carb diet. But in order for us to confirm this, we need to do genetic testing, testing that confirmed that the, the influence wasn't already there from something genetic. And that's something you guys test, right? Yeah. Our tests, um, we use next generation sequencing to analyze kind of a broad cardiometabolic screening panel. And so um, what that entails is um, we look at genes that are involved in hypercholesterolemia, but beyond the traditional familiar hypercholesterolemia, we also look at kind of non-canonical genes that have been shown to increase cholesterol. Um, beyond that, we also, we have a genetic screen for high LP little a, which is kind of an emerging um, risk factor, causal risk factor for um, cardiovascular disease. Um, beyond that, we also look at hypertriglyceridemia, so their genetic causes of hypertriglyceridemia, um, low and high HDL, which in, you know, somewhat kind of paradoxical can also increase um, cardiovascular disease. Um, we look at diabetes risk, familial obesity risk, um, and then various kind of, uh, kind of secondary or kind of, I suppose, also emerging causes of uh, cardiovascular disease, such as um, uh, hyperhomocysteinemia and other kinds, of like of a, a kind of falls within the umbrella group of endothelial dysfunction, which is kind of a you know a physical um, um, limitation to the actual endothelial layer um, within the blood vessel, and that also has been shown to contribute to heart disease. So we kind of take this gestalt view of um, you know cardiovascular disease or cardiometabolic disease in general and uh, look at genetic risk factors. Yeah, and actually, you even though you just now ran down a whole lot of things with both lipids and cardiovascular disease, I, I mean, looking over your site right now, you also have Alzheimer's, you have diabetes, you have uh, obesity, uh, you have actually quite a big host of different kinds of tests that you can do for genetics. Is that right? Correct, yeah, the Alzheimer's is still kind of for research use, um, but ultimately we're trying to position ourselves as being kind of an early detection sort of screen that, you know, the, the ultimate goal um, is to, I mean, you can imagine with Alzheimer's and for that matter with cardiovascular disease, diabetes, it kind of starts, the, the initial pathology starts at a relatively young age. And so the idea is if you either have a family uh, history of it and you want to know about your own personal uh, risk, you know, you can kind of assess that before the, you know, the pathological uh, 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 mechanisms begin to actually initiate. Um, and, you know, hopefully you can then empower, you know, take, take control of that and then, you know, do something while you're still young, um, you know, before kind of the symptoms, uh, yeah. you know, start up. So, so before we get too much further, I do want to emphasize that, uh, you guys have been extraordinarily generous because while we were shopping for somebody who'd provide these services, you, uh, it's, it's astonishing. You have actually contributed to the study 100% of your product and services for us to get it done for all 100 participants, which 
I'm not going to quote prices, but somebody could do the math on what 100 people for testing for uh, familial hypercholesterolemia is. It's a substantial amount. So I will likewise concede that I wanted to give you something back. You know, this was uh, my idea. I wanted to see if I could do a video where we kind of talk this out a little bit and where I would get the test myself. <laughs> this, is, this is my own package for GB Insight, and I'm going to do this live. Um, I get the privilege of getting the full court tutorial because I don't want to mess this up, <laughs> but it seems I, I've already kind of torn it open. I didn't get too much further. I've already kind of torn it open and it seems actually fairly straightforward. It's so I guess it's just this, this one envelope, right? There's not any more in here. And uh, it says at the top, this kit cannot be mailed until an online order has been placed by a doctor. So we do need an ordering physician. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, we, we don't offer direct to consumer yet. Um, so every genetic test has to be ordered by a physician. Um, but if anybody out there is interested, you know, just let us know and we can connect with your doctor, you know, if you want to try it out. That's true. In fact, you, again, I've got to state this, you guys are incredibly responsive. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that if somebody wanted to talk to the doctor about getting this, uh, be easy enough to do. And for that matter, if there's already existing reason to think you may be at risk, I think that it's, to me, it's, it's like a no brainer. I, I've been actually kind of excited to do this for a while. All right. So I'm, I'm pulling this out. I'm seeing the, uh, there's like an instruction packet here and it's seems fairly straightforward place a long length of tube. So you've got these like little stickers, right? And this is going to help you identify me in particular. Uh, and the doctor yeah, those three barcodes are for lab tracking basically. So stick one on the test tube, one on um, a test requisition form, and then the third one on the front of the mailer. Great. And then, yeah. So I'm going to put one on this card that you also include. And then that way I can keep it uh, to check on my tracking, right? Yeah, we offer patient tracking. So you can kind of see uh, where your test is at, when our lab receives it, the progress, when it goes through sequencing, and then uh, when your report's ready, you'll be notified. Fantastic. So I'm guessing this is going to be the key device to collect my DNA. Is that right? Is this yes, it is. CSI. <laughs> oh, and this is the, yeah, uh, this is the form I'll, I'll be filling out. Is that right? Yeah. And then I think there's just one more item in here. Or maybe two, sorry, two. So we have uh, another four high cholesterol in particular. And lastly, we have, is this the specimen container? Is that what this is? Yes, that's the test tube. Ah, gotcha, okay, all right. So this is, doesn't seem very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little step-by-step -step instructions um, in that handout um, if you want to look at pictures or anything. I do like pictures. <laughs> it's assumed that engineers only like to see um, detailed instructions. And while we do like that, it's, it's nice to take a break and just read something that's fairly straightforward. So, okay. So then if I, un oh, I see, I see. Okay, cool. So it's not like it folds out. It's basically what's happening. Um, all right. So one, remove the test tube from the Ziploc bag labeled biohazard. And that's this little guy here right now. Okay, so I got the tube out. Place the barcode sticker number one on the test tube. Full disclosure, we're recording this at an unusually early time for me. So <laughs> if I'm making uh, common fumbles as I do this on my desk, I am justified. Here we go. So it's gonna be this uh, first sticker, is that right? To put on the test tube or is it gonna be the barcode? Um, all the barcode numbers are the same on there, but the first one, um, you should write your name and date of birth and then um, put it on the test tube. Oh, I'm gonna have to come back to that because I have not a single writing utensil with me at the moment. That's <laughs> yeah, Sharpie works best too. I mean, if you write in pen, it might smear, so. 
the fine tip Sharpie would be I'm the all, best. I'm all digital. So let's pretend <laughs> that I wrote on the label and then I, I put it on here. Okay, so uh, let's say I put on the on the label. Next it says, important rinse mouth with water before using this kit, not too much. Do not touch swab tip with your fingertips or allow contact with any other object. Rub swab tip firmly against the inside of the cheek 15 to 20 times using light pressure similar to brushing your teeth. Do not touch gums or teeth as these may contain bacteria that could contaminate the test. Rotate swab tip as you rub, cover entire cheek from top to bottom, side to side. So I'll be putting this on the inside of my cheek, side to side, up and down, et cetera. But I need to yeah. rinse my mouth first, right? Yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> Just briefly. So we're going to do a quick edit and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm freshly swished. Uh, I also, by the way, got a Sharpie. So I was able to put the, uh, the date of birth and my name on the label. So I'm actually now going to take that off and catch up my missed step before. By the way, have you noticed... This little, this little effect here. I got like some sun coming from my, <laughs> from my blinds over there. It, it makes for some interesting morning videos like this. Uh, okay. So I'm going to fix that here. All right. Yeah. Next up, we've got the full-blown swab. Uh, this is great because it takes me back to CSI. Did you guys ever watch that show when it first debuted? I know there's like 50,000 offsets now, but. I have not. No, I haven't. I'm more of a Law & Order SVU girl. <laughs> <laughs> Law & Order also has a gajillion different spinoffs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take this on the inside of my cheek, rub it up and down. Uh, what, like 15, 20 times it looks like, right? Yeah, you know? just like brushing your teeth, um, you know, and get both sides of your cheeks or both cheeks. Um, yeah, just like you're brushing your teeth, try not to touch anything else in your mouth, like your teeth. Right, teeth and gums, as you mentioned here, it's because it's got bacteria, so. Mm -hmm. You're collecting the cells off your cheek. Right. Collecting your cheek cells, yeah. I can honestly say I've never done this in any video ever and probably <laughs> won't ever do it again. So this is, this is the moment, here we go. Yeah. And make sure it gets, <clears throat> sorry, my morning voice, <clears throat> make sure it gets um, wet. Like you don't just want to like brush it like the outside of your face. You want it to get, you know, soaked with your kind of saliva, your cheek cells. You want to get it in there. Okay. Uh, this is about as exciting as it looks. <laughs> it's like we're smelling a new dental ad. <laughs> Uh, I think that's 10, 15 ish. I didn't actually count, but all right. So I've got a, a healthy sample. And next up, I'm going to pull up the test tube. You got to do the other side now. What's Everybody that? wants to see an encore. You got to do your left side now. Oh, we can do both sides? I think that's what Megan said. You got to do both sides. All right. Yeah, both all right. Sides. right. I don't want to only get one side of my mouth cells. <laughs> what if you have different genes? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know these things for sure. So until we, until we get more samples, we don't know. All right. So next up, I'm going to be uncapping this and it's worth noting to the viewer, there's like already some liquid stuff in here. So it's part of the science experiment. Mm -hmm. And we uncap this according to your instructions. We hold the test tube in one hand and insert the swab into the tube. Into the test tube with the other hand, push the swab all the way to the bottom of the tube. It helps to twist with a corkscrew motion. And then we're going to do this for 15, uh, 20 times, right? Yep. So just make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. You kind of, you know, turn it like half a turn or something to get it through that barrier. Yeah, there's kind of a, yeah. Or a little resistance, then it'll hit the bottom. It yeah. Is. So then you just want to agitate it in the solution. And that's going to grab all the little pieces of the DNA off the... This time I am counting. Mm 
Okay. So we should have now collected a lot of my cells in the little test tube. They can give you a few extra spins just for good measure. Um, it's good to have some trash receptacle or something nearby. Which I don't have in my office. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do the toss. <laughs> it's just not one of those objects to miss the basket <laughs> with. I'm just saying. Okay, uh, so I'm going to cap now, right? And uh, I place in the sealed collection tube without the swab back inside the Ziploc powder hazard bag as such. Uh, and place the bag and collection tube in the shipping mailer, the original thing that all of this was contained in, which is here. Okay. Nice. And then place barcode sticker number three on the front of the shipping mailer. Ah, but you've got a nice little, little tag here for that. Oops, that's gonna be number three. Perfect. <laughs> and then that's it. This is all prepaid UP. So I, I can USPS. Basically, I can just now seal it and send it to you. Is that right? Yeah, just put it in a um, post office drop box or take it all the way into the post office. But yeah, shipping labels on there. Just make sure your stickers are in place. Your tube is sealed and in the biohazard bag. And yeah, you're good to go. All right, great. I'm going to seal this up and send this to you uh, right away. And uh, thanks. I'm excited to see what the results are going to be.